China powers on world's largest floating solar farm. China just flipped the on switch on their latest green energy project. A new floating solar farm constructed on a lake in Huainan City in central China is said to be the largest in the world. It is made up of 160,000 solar panels. These panels can produce electricity for up to 15,000 homes. The farm is connected to a city where some 2.5 million people reside. The panels are placed at varying depths over the lake. The water helps cool the electronics in the devices and stops them from overheating. Solar energy, like wind, is sporadic and environmentally dependent, meaning the amount of power panels can gather may sometimes fluctuate depending on the weather. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching for more on the latest developments in solar tech. Solar window blinds can block and harvest sunlight. A California startup has designed window blinds with solar panels that can block out sunlight while harvesting solar energy from it. Each slat in solar window blinds is equipped with monocrystalline solar panels, which can harvest solar energy. The blinds can also track the path of the sun's position and automatically change the angle of the slats to optimize its absorption of sunlight. The company claims the blinds are able to generate up to 100 watt-hours of energy for every square meter when mounted on the outside of a window, or half that amount when mounted inside. Although the slats can automatically change their angles, the blinds can also be manually controlled via an app. The company is hoping to raise $50,000 from Kickstarter in order to mass-produce the solar window blinds. Solar panels may not be all that good for the environment, America's growing reliance on solar power may have created a new enemy for environmentalists, a greenhouse gas that's thousands of times more potent than CO2. Greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. are 82% carbon dioxide. The gas nitrogen trifluoride, or NF3, accounts for only a small margin, but is on the rise. CO2 levels have risen only 5.6% from 1990 to 2015. The levels of NF3 have seen more than a 1,000% increase over those same 25 years. This exponential rise has been linked to the manufacturing sector, which uses the chemical to make solar panels, semiconductors, and LCDs. NF3 is mainly used as a cleaning agent to clear away excess silicon. Though mostly eliminated during use, a small percentage is leaked into the atmosphere. It's unclear exactly how much has been leaked, but scientists warn that NF3 is highly effective at trapping heat and can remain in the atmosphere for up to 740 years. Scientists warn that NF3, when combined with CO2 and other greenhouse gases, could lead to a climate problem, especially with NF3 emissions rising not only in the US, but in growing solar markets in Asia as well. With carbon dioxide proving difficult to limit, environmentalists could soon target NF3 in their quest to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Genius device harvests water from desert air. Certain parts of the world still lack access to safe water, but a new contraption made by a team from UC Berkeley and MIT might soon change that. The system consists of metal organic framework, or MOF crystals, pressed into a thin sheet and placed in a chamber between a solar absorber and a condenser plate. MOFs are a combination of organic and inorganic materials in a tightly packed matrix. Specific uses depend on the type of combination used. While some MOFs absorb gas, this particular one excels at absorbing water. The chamber is left open at night, allowing air to diffuse through the porous crystals and water to attach to its interior surface. During the day, sunlight heats up the water molecules in the moth, turning them into vapor that then condenses and is collected below. When tested under the same conditions as arid and desert areas, the prototype managed to pull 2.8 liters of water over a 12-hour period. The device is a significant first step, but still holds much room for improvement. For now, the team is working on making it better, particularly in terms of efficiency and output. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Dragonflies can be used to spy on you. Scientists have created a technology that can turn flying insects into surveillance drones. The technology makes use of a tiny backpack equipped with solar power and navigation systems. 
The backpack is fitted onto a dragonfly and commands the insect with optogenetics, a biological technique that uses light to control the steering neurons inside the insect's nerve cord. Dragonflies can then be turned into tiny surveillance systems. The same setup can be applied to other insects of a similar size, such as honeybees. Other applications of this technology may include guided pollination, payload delivery, and precision medicine and diagnostics. U.S. homes have huge solar potential. Google launched a project called Project Sunroof in 2015, which measures the solar potential of individual homes in the U.S. The results showed that most U.S. homes have great solar viability. Google says 79% of all U.S. rooftops are solar viable, which means four out of every five homes have enough unshaded area for solar panels to be installed. The result was calculated using 3D modeling of the homes and nearby trees to determine the amount of sunlight and shade the roof receives. In Hawaii, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico, more than 90% of the homes are solar viable, while in Pennsylvania, Maine, and Minnesota, only over 60% are viable. The project began in Boston, Fresno, and the San Francisco Bay Area. It has since expanded to every U.S. state, with about 60 million buildings across the country having been analyzed.